Gonna be very careful. That's it. Lens is off. The very first part was just opening it up. What's up? I'm Chris, and you're back at Fly Ride, where you're gonna learn about the what, how, and why of automotive custom lighting. And this is gonna be another how-to video: how to open these ugly yellow 370Z headlights. Let's dive right in. All right, one of the last videos I did was a Mazda RX-8, and I had the camera up all high and it looked like it was floating around. I don't know. You tell me, what do you like better? Up close and personal on the little vlog thing, or does it help if it's way above and you get to see all that stuff? This one's gonna be up close and personal, so I hope you don't mind, but let's get close and personal. Okay, so things that you're gonna need are gonna be a pair of gloves, a drill, a little thing to catch the flyaways, not to pry, believe it or not. This is all just glue that was excess that came from the lens when I opened it off the RX-8 lights. So what we wanna do first is make sure that we're able to put this lens down on this mat. The mat, we wanna make sure it doesn't have anything on it. So shake it off, make sure it's good to go. And then we're gonna throw the headlights on there, start working. One big thing that I see people ask all the time is if it's okay to have the ballast on the bottom or to keep the bulbs into place or whatever. I say if the bulbs are used to running at a couple hundred degrees because they're freaking bulbs and they turn on with like fire burning inside basically, they're gonna be fine. What you do wanna make sure is that you remove anything that's gonna make it, I guess, um, cumbersome to work on the light. So we have this one bracket here on the bottom that I'm gonna wanna take off because it's running right across the edge of the plastic. So. First things first, we're gonna take all of our screws out and we're gonna keep them together in this little fancy screw thing. All right, that's off. Now we just have to find the rest of the screws on there. Ooh, check that out. This is what I like to put on top of my normal gloves, but I'm out of them. So that's not gonna be in this video. It's a smart thing to do though, you should do it. So again, we just wanna make sure that we've looked all around the whole light, taking out every screw that we think might be holding in that lens. There's even this little alignment tab. I think this is for when it's on the car. It actually helps you do something, bumper, something like that. Either way, it's in the way, let's get it out of there. I think we are good on screws. Let's just inspect, make sure nothing else looks like it's hiding. And one other thing I like to do too is if I'm able to, I want to remove any potential things that are gonna get in my way. So this bulb is already out. I'm gonna twist that socket back into place. And I'm gonna look at this one down here, which I know has a running light on it. And all I'm gonna do is pull the bulb and put it back in there. Not because I'm worried about the bulb, because I don't want it in the way. And other than that, we got the ballast still on there. Everything else should be good. Make sure that it sits somewhat okay. And in this case, it sits absolutely perfect on a table. And if it's like really not good and it seems like it's gonna tip over, that's when you wanna do something like putting other kinds of blocks on the bottom side. We've got some pieces of wood in the oven, so let's throw it in there. These pieces of wood, I use them until they get pretty damn dry, but they're pretty much the best possible thing to put this on. They've been cooking forever, and here I am handling them. Wouldn't be the case if it was a metal cookie sheet. So, I don't know. I'm not saying you can't use a cookie sheet, but I wouldn't. And in she goes. We're gonna put it in at five minutes at 200 degrees. All right, here's the thing. That is a very big headlight. It's very awkward. So you're gonna have a hard time in your normal oven in your kitchen. You can use a heat gun, but don't. Just try to fit it in the oven as best as you possibly can where it's not touching any of the edges. That oven back there is massive. It's also about three grand if you were to try to buy something like that. I got it for 150 bucks, so I'm not fancy. I just got lucky. But if you just have your normal oven at home, you don't wanna use anything that is gonna mess up the light just for the sake of opening it. So I used to kinda leave the top half cracked just a little bit because these things are only gonna be in there for about five minutes, which by the way, I need to set the timer and then we'll pull them out in about five minutes. I'll check them. And then a couple minutes after that, if they're looking good and safe, then I'll pull them out. So maybe seven to eight minutes total at about 220 to 250 degrees. I got it set at 220. All right, timer just went off at five minutes. All I'm gonna do is reach in. I wanna check the tabs. I wanna make sure that they are becoming soft, but they're probably not soft yet. Point is, we wanna make sure that when I go to open these things up by hand, that it's not too stiff of glue inside still. That's really stiff. Okay, so a couple more minutes and it'll be good. 
The key point there is that I checked it to make sure that it's safe. If it had fallen out of position and I caught it in time, now if anything was, especially if you're doing this in your oven at home, if anything was out of position, it's leaning against a hot metal wall inside the oven. If you catch that off the first minute or two that it happens, it might not do bad damage. If you catch it after it's been cooking for five minutes that way, bad things happen to good people, <laughs> you know? Yeah, don't be that person. All right, glove up time. It is about eight minutes since those things have been cooking total. So I'm gonna take them out of the oven and get going. So again, we wanna make sure that this surface that I just put these on has been cleaned off prior to all of this. Now we're gonna really have a hard time unless we get these tabs out of the way, which is why we wanna heat it up long enough that if I start prying on them, they're not gonna snap. So I've done that. Now, this is not an easy light to work with because it's got this big stupid thing at this end. Here's another trick too. If you wanna try your luck at this, you can actually put the edge of the light and wedge it down here. Now the base of it's going further down, see? So I'm gonna do that. That'll actually let me get in here and really use both hands like I normally would, which is hard, but the main issue is that you could slip very easily. So that's all I managed to do right now is to just get that very leading edge opened up. So now you have a couple options. You can continue working on the bottom side, which is what I'm gonna do. And that's because it should be pretty easy now with it starting to separate to make some headway on it. And now this is where it's gonna get a little trickier. This whole section right here is really in there good. So I'm just using muscle as much as I can to get in, I'm grabbing the front part of this little triangle section one hand and the other hand I'm grabbing right here. You don't want to grab one little thing and just yank on it because it could put too much pressure on that part and cause it to break. So this is actually going really well. I'm seeing the separation here. I'm gonna do the same thing as I'm doing right here up top now. And the reason for that is I want to see this whole section start to move forward a little bit. And you'll know that I'm doing a good job with that if you start seeing this gap open up further between the lens and the back of the light. So let's see. Gotta have something good that you can grab on. And right now I'm trying to grab like on the bottom side here, not just this big handle, cause that'll rip off. And sure enough, I was able to create a lot more of a gap. And so we're looking good now. So this little tab right here is kind of buried. So when I was able to take the top lens and push it down this way, the bump that goes in that actually got pushed further down here. So now it will clear easily. If I go to lift on this, it's actually gonna slide right past. And sure enough, there it is, just past where that was. Before that, it was catching on this edge. Now it'll slip right past it easy. I'm gonna try to catch these little flyaways with just a regular flathead screwdriver. And as of right now, I've used no tools and we were able to do everything just fine. So definitely say no reason to be prying your way along this and creating all those problems for later because when you go to reseal these things, you want them to be as tight as factory but with a bunch of extra sealant. All right, so all these little flyaways, that's what you want your tool for because you don't want that to touch your projector or any of this other stuff. It's all directly underneath where you're working especially chrome, because like I've said in many other videos, getting any kind of glue on the chrome, which isn't actually chrome, it's aluminized plastic, will rub off the aluminum, because it's a very thin layer. It's a really cool video that shows a lot of the steps that they use when they make OEM lights. And so we wanna be very careful. That's it, lens is off. Now I recommend just doing this or just running your finger along that. We want all of this stuff. But as you can see, this already has dirt that's seeped in there. All of that dirt means that the seal was not super good. So I'm gonna wanna make sure that I get all of this dirt pulled off and then I'm gonna add a bunch of new sealant to the channel. So this little area all the way around where the headlight lens sits in there, that's what I'm talking about when I call it the channel. So if you can imagine, 
if you're taking something like a screwdriver and you're just prying down on this, it's creating all these bumps. Now the sealant doesn't have a nice flat surface to lay against. It's gonna have little air pockets in there. And if you've already got dirt that's seeping down into there and now it finds an air pocket, it might find a way directly through into the inside of the housing and that is going to lead to lots of leaking. If you look at all this plastic in here right now, it looks good. These have never leaked inside. A lot of lights, the second that you open them up, there's all this dust and stuff in there. The projectors are all filthy and that messes everything up. In this case, we're actually gonna take these projectors out. We're going to, not the projector necessarily, just the front half of it. I'm gonna swap the lens, I'm gonna put in a demon eye, we're gonna do a bunch of other modifications to it, and then it will have an etched lens when it's done. So the very first part was just opening it up, and now you've got the next step I will show, and after that, we'll do a further follow-up video later showing fun stuff. I will say this, these are very dirty. They're gonna have to be completely refinished. I opted to not get them refinished before we did the work. I wanna do it after all the custom work is done so that they don't have to be heated back up in the oven again. Right now, let's just take out all these internals and then I'll show you one other trick before the end of the video. Okay, so again, we wanna make sure that our surface is nice and soft. There's nothing on it, no debris, no weird stuff that'll mess up the lens even worse than it is. I'm just gonna take out these screws. We're gonna set the screws all together so that we don't lose anything we are gonna need for reassembly. Now, some of these screws, if you look, they're only in there to hold the internal pieces to the main bezel. Some of them are used to actually screw it to the lens. Just take out the ones that are screwing it to the lens and you'll be good to go. And then another thing, take a look at that little piece of glue right there. You're gonna wanna go through and lay flat any glue that's sticking up so that it doesn't touch our lens when we go to take it out. Sometimes on headlights, there's a lot of sealant, a lot of glue in there, and that makes a much bigger hurdle to have to get past. But in this case, it wasn't much. It wasn't bad at all. So I'm going to very carefully lift this lens out. Now we've got this. Now you can really see how bad that lens is. Check out that beauty. Perfect inside. So this is how good it looked inside of the lens, and the lens looked like crap. So if this was super clear, it would look like that. And when this is all modified and black and everything else and custom, we don't wanna have that shining through yellow. So we're gonna put this back on. Now here's something about this lens. This lens, yellow as it may be, is not damaged on the inside. So we never wanna to touch anything in there. If you wanna clear it, if there's a little thing that you wanna like buff out or whatever, you might find that there's a tiny little section that's cloudy and so you wanna like rub it with microfiber. If you do that, you're gonna replace that little cloudiness with a bunch of little fine line scratches that you cannot get rid of. So for nine out of 10 or 99 out of 100 people, I would say Say, never ever ever do anything more on the inside lens than a very light rinse with water and soap and don't use any sort of a cloth to wipe it at all. Just rinse it off, make sure it's all blow dry and good to go before you mess with it again. The outside, we're gonna take that to somebody and have them go to town on it. So before we do, I want to protect the inside of this since it's all pristine. So I'm gonna set this lens back on there. Now here is a cool little tip for your DIY guys at home watching this. So if you want to do this to your car, but you don't have a lot of downtime because you use your car as a daily driver or something like that, you can do everything we did right now. You can remove this nice fancy little chrome bezel right there, start modifying it, do a bunch of cool stuff. And meanwhile, you can put the lights back on the car. You can reseal them. Just do a, a quick reseal with like four minutes in the oven, push everything on there. And now you've got this. This is a headlight that has no internal bezel. It's really ugly and it works perfectly. Low beams are fine, turn signal's fine, running light's fine, everything's good to go. So you can run that while you are modifying the inside. So let's say you wanna take two weeks and paint, get everything perfect, which I recommend, especially at least one day for the paint to gas out so that it's not doing that and gas lifting off of the paint and then getting stuck to the inside of the lens. If you ever see that like rainbow weird hazy effect, not cute over time. That's because somebody painted something really quick, they put it back together and all that gas got trapped inside. Don't do that. Just just put your lights back together after everything's been done right. Take your time, make sure everything's good, and meanwhile, you have a car to use. If you wanna send your lights off to somebody else, don't rush them, because that's what they're doing. They're making sure that your headlights look dope, and just because you got a car show in five seconds from now, doesn't mean that they should do a poor job. I'm just saying, all right? And that's not me, I'm not gonna do your lights. I'm showing you how to do it. Lastly, look at this beauty in the light. I mean, this thing is pristine, it's perfect. Now, cool little thing about this light, it's actually cast out of clear plastic. 
which means this piece right here is clear on the front and then the back part's painted, it's actually clear underneath that. It's actually clear all the way underneath this chrome and I'm gonna strip that off and do something really special where we have a cool little effect of light shining up from the bottom and a cool little logo or something like that that we leave shining through. Haven't done it for a couple years. I did it last time on a GTR and it looked really, really cool. So we wanna do that for the 370 and just show another cool little option on part two of this video series. But for this one right now, I just wanted to show you what this thing looks like once you've got it all stripped out. Woo, check this out. So I did not have to strip this all the way. I could have just blasted it and then done paint on top, but I did all of the stripping on this that I could just show off what it looks like. It's kind of got a yellow tint to it, so it's not really, really cute, but you can do some things to make that look better. In my case, I don't really care too much. I'm just gonna pick a good little spot like right here, and I'm gonna put a logo on there, and then we're gonna paint it, and then we're gonna lift the logo. It will remain clear and we'll backlight it with something. It's gonna look super cool. I'm excited, never seen it on a 370. I'm sure somebody's done it, but um, in any case, that's what kind of cool stuff is hiding under the surface. So if you have crazy ideas and you want to try them out, it's best to do it yourself. And if you have a spare set of lights, that's even better. I don't think there's anything else I can put in this video that's too much value for you. But if you have any questions specifically about this one, or if maybe your lights are clear and you don't know if they are, give me a shout. There's a lot of lights out there that are, and nobody knows about it. I'm gonna show you not only which ones they are, but what to do with them once you find them and how to strip that chrome super, super easy. Cool video coming up soon. Hope to see you guys there. Like always guys, if I brought you any value with this information, subscribe to the channel. I'll get to show you all the new different things that we do to these lights, as well as to all sorts of other ones. Hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any of those uploads. And if, like I said, this brought you any value whatsoever, or it was just enjoyable to watch, hit that like button for me. It makes a big difference to YouTube. It tells them that what I'm doing actually is helping anybody and that anybody cares. And if you do care, comment below. Tell me what you learned. Tell me what you want to learn. And we'll make more of that content for you.